Hi everybody, this is Dino Chris from Prehistoric Facts, and as you can see here, I'm outside. Uh, right here, right behind me is the amphitheater for my from my college here, University of Wisconsin River Falls. And uh, today is a special episode, and as you can see from my t-shirt here, we're actually going to talk about Albertosaurus. And so, I actually asked um, many of you on Facebook to see if I if uh, of which kind of Tyrannosaur you wanted me to talk about, and uh, and pretty much I looked at all the I looked at all the suggestions, and I decided to pick uh, uh, Albertosaurus because since that it's a dinosaur I haven't talked about yet, and also it's one of my favorite Tyrannosaurs. And so let's get started with uh, Albertosaurus. Now, Albertosaurus is actually a Tyrannosaur that lived in the late Cretaceous, probably around. Um, uh, 75 to 70 million years ago, and uh, it was actually found in Canada, which was which was originally found in Canada and in uh, the province of Alberta, which is aptly named Albertosaurus. And uh, and since that, this dinosaur is actually for the size of this dinosaur, it's actually approximately 30 feet long, and probably and would probably the height would probably be maybe 10 feet high and the weight of this animal would be probably be three tons so it would be a six thousand pound uh, uh, kind of animal and so this dinosaur is actually pretty much a carnivorous dinosaur and I got a little bit of something here to show you and excuse me for a minute here it is. This is the Albertosaurus tooth. Got this from a uh, good. Then this is a replica. This is not an actual tooth, but this is actually a replica. And uh, this tooth, if you actually try to compare it to its larger and more powerful cousin, Tyrannosaurus rex. Now, when we actually look at these two dinosaurs here, we actually see that one is actually one tooth is actually specialized for slicing through meat and the other one is for is for puncturing and is for puncturing and actually crushing bone and so this actual so these two dinosaurs would have had very different uh, biting styles whereas Albertosaurus would actually just uh, try to would have a more shallow bite whereas Tyrannosaurus Rex would have a much deeper bite and since Albertosaurus a smaller Tyrannosaur would actually be faster than Tyrannosaurus rex. Calculations of uh, biomechanical studies on Tyrannosaurs suggest that with Albertosaurus it probably ran approximately 30 miles per hour. So this is a very fast Tyrannosaur in terms of Tyrannosaurus and of large Tyrannosaur standards. So this dinosaur would so Albertosaurus would actually be probably the fastest of the of the largest of the large tyrannosaurs. So this dinosaur would actually be so well developed for pursuing prey, and since uh, in the 90s there was actually a discovery by Dr. Phil Curry in uh, Alberta, who is a professor at the University of Alberta. He actually has discovered a bone bed which was actually a site originally discovered by Barnum Brown uh, back in the back in the 1910s uh, he actually has rediscovered the site where there's multiple Albertosaurus specimens found together and that suggests that it possibly could be that they lived and died together and possibly uh, hunted together and so that is actually almost a good indication that it could actually be good evidence of packing behavior so this would actually be a good indication that Tyrannosaurus probably did have uh, very uh, complex social behaviors now they're not going to be as as uh, complex as like lions or hyenas my standards so they're not really going to be uh, like particularly like like great like lovable family members to actually share food so these dinosaurs would actually probably be squabbling over who would actually have the bigger parts would, would actually get the best parts of the carcass or mainly the kill 
So mainly the the alpha male or female would actually get the get the goods. So it would actually be pretty much uh, the juveniles would actually probably just get like the scraps and pretty much uh, you know, the smaller ones would actually just get the would just probably get like bits and pieces of probably like the legs or the tail, you know, that sort of stuff. And since Albertosaurus actually did live in an environment where there's a multiple sources of prey, you know, can hunt uh, the had hadrosaurs, can actually hunt the ceratopsians. There's like multiple ceratopsian specimens that have been found uh, during that time. <sighs> Excuse me, a little ant on my laptop here, and. Uh, what we actually kind of see here is actually that uh, that Albertosaurus had multiple sources of prey that it can actually hunt. It can hunt the Ceratopsians if it had to, like Pachyrhinosaurus, Centrosaurus, Ceracosaurus, you name it. And also, probably, it actually hunted the Hadrosaurs like uh, like Carithosaurus, uh, Pyrrhosaurolophus, you know, those kinds of uh, uh, Hadrosaurs. But also, there were Ankylosaurs around too, like. Euplocephalus, and and I think uh, in Montania when it's actually around that, in that during that time, but also there's other predators around. Other Tyrannosaurus were actually living in its environment, like Gorgosaurus, uh, Displetosaurus. But even though there's been uh, evidence to suggest that Displetosaurus came before Albertosaurus, or otherwise, like Gorgosaurus actually came after Albertosaurus. But you see, um, it's probably more likely that these three Tyrannosaurus actually came in contact with each other, but they actually probably specialized in different prey. I would suggest that uh, the Spletosaurus kind of almost robust, but even though it's a smaller dinosaur, I can actually say that I actually probably hunted the Hadrosaurus a little bit more, and a little bit of the Ceratopsians, but also I'd probably say Albertosaurus is more well equipped to actually hunt down the Hadrosaurus, and would actually hunt uh, Ceratopsians uh, less, but even though it could actually take them down if it had to. And as for um, the environment it can actually live in, Albertosaurus, there's probably probably like two or three different kinds of specimens of Albertosaurus. One is actually living in a coastal and kind of environment where it's actually very uh, hum very um, tropical, and probably it was actually kind of a rainforest kind of. Uh, kind of area or swampy and then you actually got the Albertosaurus specimens that are probably more inland where it actually uh, where it's actually a little bit drier and also would have actually been um, hunting right near the rivers or the or the lakes of the of some certain habitats and so and if I actually kind of actually come down to the end here of this kind of the end of the description of Albertosaurus here it is actually probably the extinction of Albertosaurus is probably outcompeted by uh, new predators. And since 70 million years ago, there's, the Tyrannosaurus were actually starting to get bigger and also getting robust. So that actually suggests that it's the beginning of the time when Tyrannosaurus actually kind of started to evolve, started to appear. And during that time, it was pretty much that Tyrannosaurus is actually probably going to be taking over as the top predator. And probably Albertosaurus, like Albertosaurus, probably did shrink down and probably became Nanotyrannus. But I think but I think Nanotyrannus probably came from a lineage probably like similar to Gorgosaurus, because since Gorgosaurus is actually a smaller, large Tyrannosaurus, so it would actually probably be pretty close to uh, to uh, Gorgosaurus, and then also the environment got warmer and drier, so that actually suggests that that the time of Albertosaurus, the climate was a little bit cooler, but even though it wasn't actually like where we saw like ice caps or anything like that on Earth, there was no ice caps during the time of the dinosaurs, so it was actually going to be pretty much climate changes and also out being out competed by new predators. And, uh, and it, since I'll actually talk about the brain a little bit here, Albertosaurus's brain is actually is large compared is large compared to other uh, large theropods like uh, like the Allosaurs or the Carcharodontosaurs. So it's actually very more complex behavior than the Allosaurs or the 
or the Carcharodontosaurus. Not as advanced as the as the Dromaeosaurus. All right, that's an out, and that's it for the segment of of uh, Albertosaurus. But uh, I want to make an important announcement here. Um, for three weeks, I will not be doing an episode. So. The next three weeks, there will be no episodes because since I'll be actually uh, be on a trip to the Black Hills uh, for for pretty much almost eleven pretty much almost eleven days, so it's actually going to be an eleven trip, eleven day trip. So I would not be available. I would not be available most of the time. But even though you could still, but the next episode would actually be an answering questions episode and that will actually happen on june 7th so which is actually four weeks from today so you can still actually send me questions about dinosaurs or other prehistoric life by emailing me at dinochris71 at gmail.com or other ways you can actually post the questions on the facebook page in the comments section prehistoric facts with dino chris like the page and then you can actually send me some questions there and also you can follow me on twitter at c s g r a l l that's my twitter name and then also you can actually uh you can still send me questions anytime during when i'm actually on the trip it's basically that i'm not going to be available that much you can actually still post the questions on the comment section of a facebook post on prehistoric facts with Daniel Chris Facebook page, and then that you can actually answer your questions that way. I can actually look at the the questions on the prehistoric on the Facebook page. That way, it's a lot easier for me to look at the the um, the questions that way. But uh, hopefully, you guys understand, and uh, hopefully, uh, you guys can actually continue to send me questions uh, throughout the three weeks, and I'm actually going to be gone. But uh, but uh, hopefully uh, some good questions would actually come up. And uh, hopefully you got some pretty good questions for me to actually answer. And that way I can actually get back in the game after that, the long hikes. And, and also I'll be doing fossil hunting as well uh, during that time too. All right, that's it for now. And uh, make sure to take care of the people around you. And also for your younger people out there, be sure to look. Be sure to listen to your parents, your teachers, and your guardians. Those are the best motivation you can have for a good education, and that's very important to have a good education, because when you have a good education, you can get a good job in your future. And that's it for now, and I'll see you guys on June 7th. See you then.